Do you love stuffed cabbage but hate making it? Because let's face it, dealing with the cabbage is kind of a pain. Well, at least that's how I always felt until I found this trick for using the Ninja Foodi to get the perfect consistency to the cabbage so you can roll perfect cabbage rolls and then we're gonna top them with this delicious sauce. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna make cabbage rolls, but it's not gonna take all day. We're gonna get this done in no time at all using the Ninja Foodi pressure cooker and air crisper. However, you could use the Instant Pot or any electric pressure cooker for this recipe. It'll be just fine. First thing we need to deal with is the cabbage. This is always the part that's so hard. I've tried so many different tricks for getting the perfect consistency of cabbage, which means it's not too soft and it's not too firm so that we can roll cabbage rolls. Well, they've all pretty much failed. And, and there's a ton of different ways you can do it, but this way is the way that I was amazed by and it works every single time. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the core at the bottom of the cabbage. And I'm gonna do that starting with a knife. And I'm just gonna insert the knife around the core. Be careful when you do this, of course. All right, after I make some slits here, these are not exact. I do want them to connect though. Then I'm gonna take my apple core. So this has worked fantastic. It's unbelievable how much easier it is. And I go straight down the middle here and just work it in. And then pull it out. And that's the start of coring the cabbage. Otherwise, you're really playing around with the knife for quite a while. So I found this to be so fast and easy. Then I go around the core. So now I'm gonna get the rest out. Pretty good, okay. So now that that's cored out, we're just gonna leave it just like this. Now I did remove some of the outer leaves that just weren't looking too good. So I've got a nice uh, head of cabbage here and we're gonna use the basket to put the cabbage in, two cups of water. All right, so now you wanna put the cabbage into the Ninja Foodi, into the basket with the side that you just cored out down. And this is when we check for fit, okay? Because I've been using four pound cabbages, but Jeff got me a really big one, which is five pounds, and I don't think it's going to fit in here. And it's not, the pressure lid will not go on. Even if I tried something with a lower profile, I can tell that this is just not going to fit. I don't wanna put it right directly in the bottom of the pot, so I'm gonna have to make some modifications to the cabbage. Oops, I don't need to take that out, because we are still gonna use that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, which is not something I really like to do, is I'm going to trim the bottom off a little bit so that we can fit this in. Now, if you had the eight quart, that would be no problem, and I could switch out to the eight quart, but I figure some of you might run into this problem, so you're gonna need to know how to fix it. Now, the other option we could do is take off all the outer leaves, but I don't like to waste those. These are really nice for rolling because they are the really big ones, so I don't really wanna waste it. So I am just gonna take this off, and I'm gonna start Start just by shaving off a little bit here. So maybe take an inch off and see. We could chop that up and make some coleslaw. I might add it into the sauce though. All right, let's see. I don't think I did enough, but let's check it because we don't want to do more than we need to work. Just a little bit too tall. Now if I switch from the basket over to my sling, I bet it would work. But I'm not going to do that because uh, I think finding a four pound cabbage is fairly easy. So that's what I would recommend for this recipe. Turn that 
to get it in my sauce there. These are the kind of things that we run into when we're making recipes. You know, produce comes in all different uh, shapes and sizes, so. All right, I think this is gonna work now. Yay. All right, so we've got two cups of water in. Our cabbage now fits. We're gonna keep it vented, keep the valve vented in the back. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna stick with 15 minutes of steam time since I just shaved this off. And we'll see, we can always add some more time if we need to. So 15 minutes of steam and hit the start button. It'll take a little while for the two cups of water to heat up and start producing steam. And we will see the steam come out. And even sometimes the little button in the back will pop up. Don't worry about that, it's fine. As long as you are vented, you are not under pressure and you're not gonna overcook your cabbage. All right, so let me clean up here and let's make the meat mixture, the stuffing that's gonna go inside of these cabbage rolls. All right, so let's make the filling for the cabbage rolls. What you're gonna need is two pounds of ground meat. You can use any kind of ground meat you want. What I'm using is a ground, uh, well, it's a ground beef that I made myself. So I think an 80-20 would probably be the best bet for you guys. And I'm using a pound of sausage. The sausage I'm using is Italian sausage and I have two different kinds. Half of the pound is sweet sausage and the other half of a pound is hot sausage. That's the blend that I really like, uh, but you can obviously put all sweet sausage. You can put you know any anything you want. The sausage that I'm using comes in a casing, so I do remove it from the casing, and I do that just by squeezing the one end out, grabbing a hold of the casing, and squeezing the other end out so that we get all the sausage out of the casing. Now, one thing I will say is if you're not gonna use sausage, if you wanna use all ground beef or ground turkey or, or a combination of the two, whatever, you're gonna probably want some more seasonings than I'm using because I'm using very basic seasonings and not that much of it because the sausage gives so much flavor to the meat. So while we're talking about seasonings, we're gonna go ahead and add those in. What I have is one and a half teaspoons of fine grind sea salt that is very different than table salt. So if you're gonna use table salt, definitely decrease that. Uh, one teaspoon of black pepper, half of a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Not salt, but powders. If you use garlic salt or onion salt, cut your salt back so it doesn't become too salty. All right, the next thing I'm gonna put in is are my onion dices. And I dice these fairly small, probably like a quarter inch dice. This is one small Vidalia onion. It's about three quarters of a cup. So one onion, red, yellow, white, Vidalia, whatever you want. Sweet onion, anything's fine. Put that in. I hope my bowl's big enough for mixing. Then I have two large garlic cloves, and these were pretty large that I minced up. So this is about one to two teaspoons. It's probably about two teaspoons of garlic that's minced. I'm gonna put that up. All right, so that little beep was telling us that the steam is building and the countdown's starting, and we can see the steam coming out of the back there. The next ingredient I'm gonna put in is one half of a cup of white rice, not rinsed, not cooked, just dump it in. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Dump that in. And three large eggs. Dump those in. All right, now it's time to mix it up. And the best way to do that is with clean hands. So that's what I'm gonna do. But of course you could use a spatula, whatever you wanna do. Or a stand mixer would probably mix this up pretty well too. So I'm just gonna get in here and mix it all up. My bowl's a little small, so you might want to get a bigger bowl than I have here. So you can really get in there and flip it over. And I break up the sausage meat pretty well because otherwise it kind of tends to cook in one clump and then the inside of your cabbage rolls, you have like a pocket of sausage. And I like to get that sausage flavor all throughout. So I mix that up pretty well. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you were using a drier meat or a leaner meat, I should say, you might wanna add in a little bit more moisture, maybe an extra egg or a little bit uh, more of the Worcestershire sauce so that you um, have enough liquid in there to completely cook the rice and you know keep it nice and flavorful and moist. 
All right, that looks good. My button's about to pop up on the back, so that definitely could happen. Do not worry about it, it's gonna be fine. It will go back down. All right, so let me clean up here, and now we're gonna mix up our sauce. All right, so now we're gonna make up the sauce that we're gonna cook the cabbage rolls in. What I have here is one can of fire roasted tomatoes. Those are a 14 and a half ounce can. You could use crushed tomatoes, another kind of diced tomatoes. If you don't wanna use the fire roasted, that's gonna be just fine. And I have one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Quarter cup of red wine vinegar. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Quarter cup of brown sugar. This is optional, but it really helps to balance all the flavors. All right, now the spice blend. Let's get to that real quick. The spice blend is again, the same spices that we put into the filling. And, but different quantities. So it's one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, half of a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder. So we're gonna put those in. And now we're just gonna whisk it up. All right, that's good. Now we just wait for the cabbage to be done, then we will Fill and roll our cabbage rolls, which is super easy to do. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And then we will get everything back into the pot to pressure cook for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna be almost done. So it's really quick and easy. All right, so the 15 minutes of steam time is done, but my silver, which mine's silver here, this is the newer model, some of them are red. The pin is still up. That's perfectly fine. It's going to go down in a second. So just wait for it to go down. No worries at all. It has popped up and gone down a few times during the steaming, but I'm still getting a lot of steam coming out from the valve. So we are not overcooking the cabbage. We're not pressure cooking or anything like that. So I'll just wait for it to cool down. You can turn the pot off now. There it goes. All right. So now go ahead and open the lid. Do that away from you because it is very steamy in there and then I'm gonna put on my gloves and I'm gonna pull the basket out and dump the cabbage onto the plate and hopefully this bigger cabbage cooked in the 15 minutes and the easiest thing I find is just to go ahead and dump it out well actually this one's kind of kind of cumbersome all right Put that over there now I need to flip it over but I'm not going to touch it with my gloves these are not they're heat resistant but they are not steam resistant so if they get wet they do get hot so I'm just going to set this here for a minute take these off and then I'm just going to use the equipment that I have here which is my knife and and I'm going to get creative right we're going to turn this over there we go all right so it's going to be really hot right now, so I definitely suggest letting it cool off until you can touch it comfortably with your hands. And then I'll bring it up here, actually. I should have just put it right on here. So that takes about five minutes or so. And then we're going to peel off all the leaves, and then we'll get to stuff in our cabbage rolls. All right, so while the cabbage was cooling, I dumped the pot, so we're starting with, you know, no water in the pot there. And now, the easiest way to do this is to find the edge here. So, let me go over this. So, the stem is right here, so this is the, the harder part, and then these are the leaves here. And the easiest way to do it is just to take your fingers and gently roll it off. And then it comes right off in a full cabbage leaf and then we're gonna set that over here and the cat I I have fun with this because it's like a puzzle to me so I find the next one and I do the same thing All right, there we go and just keep doing that until you get all the cabbage leaves off 
The ones inside are a little harder, so I'll go over that when I get to it. So when you get down to this part of the cabbage, it gets a little bit harder because it gets a little bit more wrinkly and the leaves get stuck. So what I just do is just run my finger and try to find exactly where it starts and where it ends on each side and kind of lift up a little bit, flip it back around, lift it up here and try to just do it really gently so I don't tear it, which I just did. It happens, it's okay. Um, and just sort of lift it off the best you can because the under the cabbage leaves underneath kind of hold on to these a little bit more so it's not quite as easy but there we go so it does come off then that's not going to matter all right so we're going to keep going until i finish as many leaves as i can and don't throw any of this away because we are going to need it in just a little bit to uh, prevent that water notice All right, so I've gotten as many cabbage leaves as I can that are gonna be good for rolling. In fact, even some of these we're gonna to use to prevent the water notice, and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. So this inside piece is not really good for anything, but I don't throw it away, I add it to the sauce. I love the chunkiness of it. So when you're pouring it over top of the cabbage rolls, you've got these the soft little pieces of cabbage in there, and I love that, but it's totally optional. So I'm gonna move these to the side here. We're gonna talk about this stack in a minute, and I'm just gonna chop these up. I just add it directly to the sauce. If they're really big pieces, like I didn't chop that one well enough, I go ahead and go, you know, try to make them little bite-sized pieces. Okay, all right, so now let's start making our cabbage rolls. But the first thing we need to do is get a little insurance policy. And that insurance policy is that we're not going to get the water notice. So I test my recipes a lot. And I tested this one a couple of times and it worked out absolutely perfectly. And then we went to film it and guess what I got? The water notice. So I had to really think, why did I get the water notice? I finally figured it out, so I'm gonna share it with you so that you don't make the same mistake. You wanna use the thicker leaves, not the thinner outer leaves for this next step that I'm gonna show you. They need to be thick and a little bit more substantial. So I will show you at the end of this video how I fixed the water notice just in case you get it, which you shouldn't. If you follow these instructions to the T, you should be perfectly fine. But just in case, I fixed it, dinner was saved, everything was delicious. Those cabbage rolls are in the freezer now, and so I can tell you how to reheat them from frozen in my written post. So make sure you stick around to the end to watch that video of how to fix the water notice. It was really interesting. Okay, so now, we're using a thicker sauce to go under pressure. The cabbage rolls themselves will release liquid as it cooks. So having enough liquid in the pot towards the middle of pressure cooking is not a big deal. But right at the beginning, we have to have enough to build the pressure. I also have found that cabbage rolls sitting on the very bottom of the pot can tend to brown, and then that can trigger the water notice. So we are gonna fix that by lining the bottom of the pot with these thicker cabbage leaves from the inside. These are not good for folding anyway, so they really don't work very well. So I'm just gonna like kind of break them so that they sit as flat as they can, and I'm gonna line the bottom of the pot. This is one part of our insurance policy. We have another part that I'm gonna do. I did not do the next part in the test batches, uh, and it, I didn't need to, but I really do not want you guys to have any issues with this recipe at all. So I wanna add one extra thing to make sure that we don't get the water notice. 
All right, so we're just creating a nice little bed there. Then what I'm gonna do is add in four tablespoons or a quarter cup of chicken stock just to the bottom. All right, and now we are ready to roll our cabbage rolls and fill them into the pot. So I'm gonna start with the larger leaves that we have here because they're a little bit easier to deal with and they get really nice rolls. So I'm gonna show you that first and then we will move on to how to do the kind of the smaller ones. All right, so we have a nice big cabbage leaf but there's this hard stem that can make it difficult to roll. I used to slice them, but I found that it was, it was kind of cumbersome to deal with and they didn't seal right. So now what I do is just take my sharp knife and just go right along this stem here and cut it off. So now I've removed this really hard part that isn't that great when you go to bite into a cabbage roll. Then we turn it over Kind of push it as flat as you can get it, like that, and we're gonna add our mixture. Now, the amount of mixture that you add depends on the size of your, of your cabbage leaf. So we can add a little bit more to these, and then when we get to the smaller ones, we have to add less. So all the cabbage rolls are not gonna be the same size. Unless you wanted to do several heads of cabbage and just use the bigger leaves, then of course you could do that. All right, so this is the medium scoop from Pampered Chef, and it holds probably a good tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And I'm gonna put two of those in these bigger rolls. And then to wrap them so they stay together, they're nice and tight, you wanna have a good inch or so on either side because these that's our ends to tuck in. You start at the stem end that we just kinda of cut off, move it over the beef mixture, pull it back to make a tight roll. So pull back with your fingers and then fold in these edges. I could have probably put a little bit more meat mixture in there and then roll them. And that's how you get a really nice cabbage roll. It's beautiful. Some people stick them with toothpicks, but I haven't found that necessary. All right, now we're just gonna start layering these in the pot. All right, so that's a pretty big one. I'm trying to find a smaller one that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to roll. That one might be too hard to roll at all, and I'm gonna show you what I do with those. Let's see. All right, let's give these a try. All right, so now we've got one of the uh, smaller leaves. I'm gonna start doing it with the same technique, taking my sharp knife and going down the stem. This one might be too hard to roll, but we're gonna give it a try. This one, one scoop, which is probably about one and a half tablespoons. And then you do the same thing. So you fold this edge over, pull back, fold these in, and roll. And sometimes, like this one, had a little blowout. It's fine, don't worry about it. They're still delicious. Let me find one that is too small to even roll. I'll show you, that's a pretty big one. Maybe I don't have any. Well, maybe these are too small to roll because that one didn't roll very well, did it? So I think I'll show you this one to roll. And then what I do with these ones that really don't roll, like that. So what I do, same thing, take the stem off the back here. I put the mixture right in the middle. You can kind of fill these up. And then I just wrap them like this. So just, they're not really gonna be tight. And I put those on top. Okay, that's how I do it. You can choose to use them or not use them, but I'll put that one on top in a little bit. All right, so that's it. So I got 12 cabbage rolls out of this head of cabbage, but I've gotten up to 20 rolls out of another head of cabbage. So the smaller head of cabbage, the leaves were smaller, so I used less of the filling. So there's really no right or wrong way. Just make sure you don't overfill them so that they don't come out. As a matter of fact, that one that I was gonna use as a cup, which usually I'll just set right on top, I ended up using the meat out of it. So I won't be using those cabbage leaves because now I'm out of the filling mixture. Okay, so now we are just going to get our sauce. 
and I'll just put this down in. It's not really that big of a deal. You don't really have to mix it up or anything like that. All right, so now we're gonna pour the sauce over top of the cabbage rolls. Now we've got that little bit of insurance policy, that quarter cup of thin liquid, and those cabbage leaves that are going to provide the thin liquid that we need to go under pressure. All right, so now we put the pressure lid on, turn the valve to seal, turn the Ninja Foodi on or your Instant Pot or electric pressure cooker. We wanna to go to high, that's fine, and 10 minutes is what it defaults to and that's what we want. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, not too much though, maybe eight, 10 minutes to come up to pressure. We will pressure cook on high for 10 minutes and then I'll do a 10 minute natural release. All right, so there we go. So it took longer than I thought. So it took a good 15 minutes for the pin in the back to pop up and then another three to four minutes for it to start the countdown. But no worries, it's just a full pot and it takes as much time as it takes. We're not gonna overcook our cabbage rolls or anything like that. Now, I wanted to tell you that, you know, it's the smallest changes in a recipe that can lead to disaster. And in my case, it was the water notice that I got while I was filming this video the other day. And again, I had tested the recipe, it worked fine. Um, but I made one change and that change caused the water notice. And that was, instead of throwing those outer leaves away, I went ahead and put those on the bottom. But guess what? They were thinner and they ended up burning a little bit. They got really brown and so they triggered the water notice. There was plenty of liquid in the pot from the cabbage. That wasn't the issue. The issue was simply those brown leaves on the bottom. And I'll show you at the end of the video how I fixed it because it can be fixed. No worries. If you get the water notice, don't freak out. Just investigate. All right, so the pin in the back just dropped. You can see that took a couple of minutes. That's because there's a lot of steam built in. It's a pretty full pot. And now we are going to open the lid. Don't worry about what the top looks like at all. We're gonna fix all that in just a second. Now we are going to need to thicken this sauce a little bit. It's a little on the thin side. So to do that, I go ahead and remove my cabbage rolls and put them in to the platter that you wanna serve them on. Just kind of move this stuff off and start grabbing them out. Wow, they look so good. Go. That's it. Okay, so now to thicken the sauce, I use two ingredients, which I think are unbelievably delicious in here. Well, one of them is unbelievably delicious and that's sour cream, which may not be a usual ingredient, but oh, it just made the sauce perfect. The thickening part of it really is done by the tomato paste though. And this is six ounces, so one of those little jars of tomato paste. Now, if you were gonna skip the tomato paste, you could thicken, like if you wanted to do cream cheese or something, you could do that. I know some people thicken their tomato, I mean their spaghetti with cream cheese, but I like to keep this tomato based. So we're gonna just stir that in. If it was still too thin, you could certainly do the sear saute. That would be fine to kind of burn off some of the liquid if you wanted it a little thicker. I wouldn't add too much more tomato paste though because you're gonna dilute the flavors in the sauce and the seasonings were measured out based on six ounces of tomato paste. All right, so let's stir this all in. All right, that looks perfect. And now we just ladle it over top of our cabbage rolls. The sauce is so amazing. I cannot wait for you guys to try it. Oops, I'm running it right over my bowl. All right, that's all I'm gonna put in there for now because I'm kind of flowing over the sides here. So let's go ahead and put that down on the counter. Doesn't that look amazing? All right, now we are gonna taste it. This is the best part. Good. 
good. I'm gonna get a thicker cabbage leaf. That's one of the ones that's gonna be a little thicker because I wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way, which I'm sure it is. Here, let me just grab something out of here to make it a little easier. Throw the sauce, oh my gosh, this looks so good. All right, so if I did everything correctly, these should be fork tender, melt in your mouth, and absolutely delicious. So let's find out. Yeah, they're cutting with the fork. That's good. A little harder spot right there where it folds over, but nothing to worry about. I don't want all that cabbage. I'm gonna cut this off. There's our filling and our cabbage roll. It kind of fell apart a little bit. No worries. All right, here we go. Let's see what the flavor tastes like. Absolutely perfection. All right, this is absolutely delicious and I cannot wait to hear how you like it. Now, let me talk about how did I fix the water notice? Because you know, it's bound to happen when we're experimenting with things in the pressure cooker. So what I did, the first thing I did was turn the pot off and release the steam. Once the steam was released and the pin dropped down, I opened up the lid and I looked around. I just sort of moved the food around a little bit, but I could see there was plenty of water in there. Plenty of liquid, I should say. So then I put the lid back on. I thought, let's just see, will it come back under pressure? So I put the lid back on and I got the water notice again. So then I knew absolutely without a doubt something was burning down at the bottom and it was triggering the water notice. So I removed the cabbage rolls and got down to those leaves and oh my were they brown. So that was the culprit for the water notice. So to avoid that, don't use the outer leaves, use the inner leaves because they're thicker. They're still gonna produce liquid, but they're not going to burn as easily to the bottom of the pot. And they weren't really burned, they were just brown. But it was enough to cause that water notice. So if you get the water notice, don't freak out. Stop, investigate, and fix it. And if something is really burned, let's say you're making rice or something like that, if it or pasta, if it's really burnt on the bottom, just carefully scoop out your ingredients into a bowl and then scrape out the bottom and wash the pot. You do not wanna just simply scrape because then all that burn flavor is gonna go into your dish and dinner will be ruined. But you can salvage it, just take the contents out, then take care of the burnt part on the bottom. Wash the pot and put everything back in, add a little bit more liquid if you need to, and then go back under pressure and your dinner will be saved.